One of the things I absolutely love about retro video gaming is getting in and tweaking and playing around with different systems. Whether we're talking about doing an RGB mod on a Super NES or a Super Famicom or even an N64 or doing an HDMI mod on like our top loader NES that we have here or now on the N64 again thanks to the excellent Pixel FX. There's a lot of times when I find myself reaching for my soldering iron. Now it's one of those things that you need to have a good tool to make sure that you are not ruining your components. I have recently upgraded from my Track Power RC soldering equipment that I'd used for years and years to about six months ago I picked up this here based on the recommendation of the one and only Voltar. Voltar is the one who makes those excellent RGB boards for the Super NES Junior and the Super Famicom Junior along with the N64 and he for a long time has now been talking about this here. This is the, the Kesker or the KSGER the T12 soldering station and for the money it actually offers a lot of features for a fairly low price. Now the one thing that I have noticed specifically when I did the Pixel FX mod on my N64 and make sure you're subscribed so you see that video when it goes live is the fact that I was having issues flowing solder on the pins and I actually ruined two of the ribbon cables. One I melted the uh, the pins where it goes onto the main chip and the other one I actually had a pad lift off of the ribbon cable itself. So it got me thinking and looking and one of the problems with the Kesker soldering iron is the fact that it's not calibrated out of the box. And if you have a soldering iron that is either hotter or colder than what you're thinking, you could lift pads, ruin ribbon cables, and have other issues when you are trying to solder. So what we are gonna do in this episode, we're gonna show you how we went ahead and used this tool here. This is called the FG100, and there's 101 different variants of this. But this will allow us to go ahead and calibrate our soldering iron tip per tip, so we have multiple tips, and we can go ahead and calibrate each one in the soldering iron to make sure that the temperature that we are setting the soldering iron station to is actually the heat that we are applying to our electrical components. Heat damages things like capacitors, resistors, ribbon cables very, very easily. So if you think you are at one temperature and you're 100 degrees higher or lower, and that did happen with mine, you can really have some issues. The other thing we're gonna test out is Kesker also has an aluminum handled soldering iron handle, and this should give us a lot more precision than what the plastic handle does, better feeling in the hand, and quicker change tips. So we're gonna go ahead, hit the bench, and take a look how we went ahead and calibrated our Kesker soldering iron. Let's go get started. Before we dive into the new handle and the calibration and everything, let's look at the calibration tool that we have here. This is called the FG100, and this is actually where your temperature reading is being taken from. When I initially saw this, I thought, oh, you hit the soldering iron tip right there. No, no, it, it touches on that there. And if you need to remove or replace it, you can actually just push that button in there, and then it will adjust the uh, the wire there. It does come with five total ones, so this one of four spares. Uh, turn it on here, it has a bit of a, a film on it. Uh, as you can see, it's reading 24.6 degrees Celsius uh, in here right now. If I put my finger on it, you can see it slowly start to go up. So um, pretty simple and basic. Now there are, like Hako makes a version of this where you can actually switch between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. This one does not do that, unfortunately, but just something to be aware of. This was like 15 or $16 on banggood.com. So that's where I got this along with the aluminum handle. So let's turn our attention now to our soldering station. Now, if you're not aware of, on the Kesker tips, they actually have a little band around here with the name of your specific tip. So this is a JL02 that's on this one. This one, I think, is a K, and so on and so forth, depending on what tip you're using. Now, before we start everything up, what we're actually going to do is, instead of using the plastic handle, we are going to install the aluminum one. And the main thing, just an aluminum body versus plastic. It handles heat a little bit better. Feels better in the hand. I think it's more precise. The other benefit to the aluminum handle as well to uh, install and remove tips, it's literally drop it in or pull it out. You don't have to unscrew uh, the end as you do on that one. So to do the swap, super easy. We're just going to unscrew the thumb screw, pull that out, 
There is a tab or an uh, uh, indentation on the top to help align everything and tighten down the knurled knob, which was what they called me in high school. Not really, but they should have. So the other thing I'm gonna do here too, before I turn that on, is I'm just going to remove the blade tip that we have on this one, because this is actually what I tend to use, and this is uh, the K, that's what it was. So here you can see how this, you have to unscrew and screw uh, back together if you are using the plastic handle. Um, does, you know, it feels okay. I've, I've done okay with this, but I do prefer the metal tip there. The other thing, never set your soldering iron tips tip down. Try to set it tip up. I am gonna use the same soldering iron stand that I have been using. Um, this can actually go all the way through. So what I'll do is I'll just set it right like so to go ahead and um, hold it when I am not soldering. Now we're gonna pull this aside for just a moment and let's actually turn this on and I'll show you how to go into the calibration process. If you look here on the screen, you have this JL02, which corresponds with our tip that we installed. The little asterisk there means that it's been calibrated. If it has an O or a circle there, that means it has not. If you want to change tips, what you end up doing is you push the knob in and turn to the right. There I can select tip J02, K, KR. I have a, a few tips for this, but we are gonna stick with the JL02 for now. Now if I want to go into the calibration process, what I do, push in, turn to the left. Now I can start, initiate, or exit. I'm going to start. And this is where we bring in our, our little tester that we have here. So what this is telling me on this screen right here is where it should be versus where it actually is. So uh, what it's telling me is the current temp should be 449 degrees, 450 degrees. The real temp is where I would adjust it on here. So we're going to turn on our tester and try to get this adjusted so you can see it the best. There you can probably see it now what we need to do. We're going to clean off our tip. I have just a sponge off screen here and wipe that off. And I'm going to take just a little bit of solder so I have something to transfer heat. Just tin the iron and place it on. There's a pad right in the middle and now you can see our uh, temperature is going up. So that's saying it's only 369 degrees, so I turn this down until it gets to 369. I know my hand is in the way, we'll move it in a second. So there you can see 369. And I am kind of rotating the tip a little bit side to side, making sure that I'm getting uh, good heat transfer that it is effective. So 368, 367, so we're gonna bump it down two more degrees. Push the button in, and now what it's going to do is it's going to drop the temperature on the iron itself and then give you another opportunity to calibrate. So we'll wait for it to say that it is cooled down to the proper temperature. So it's reading uh, 354, 355 degrees. Once again, we're gonna tin our iron apply our heat and this is really kind of the boringest part of it but you can kind of see we are at 285 289 so we'll bump that down 287 288 we'll drop it 288 okay clean our tip again push it in and now it is checking for 252 degrees all right, it says we're at 255. Tin the iron. Again, the only reason to tin the iron here is to make sure we are getting good, good heat transfer. Here it is saying it's only 198, not even 200 degrees. So we are, you can see how significantly off we were in our temps. Okay, so 208. I mean, we're 40 to 50 degrees off across the board. Yeah, so... And now it takes us back to our main screen. So there you have it, our look at the aluminum handle for the Kesker T12 soldering iron and how to go ahead and calibrate it using the FG100 little calibration tool that we have here. Now, I will tell you before buying either of these, I tried just using like a temp gun and whatnot to check the temp temperature, the tip temperature, easy for me to say, and 
did not work. Use the right tools for something like this. And even like this, I mean, this was under $15 on banggood.com. I will have a link down below in a pinned comment where if you want to pick one of these up, you can do so. Um, it's inexpensive and it's one of those things when you are soldering on equipment such as this. Uh, you can't get new parts anymore. The only way you can fix some of the stuff is to rob from another system. So to ensure that you're not damaging components irrevocably, you want to make sure to go ahead and have your soldering iron and other equipment working the best that it possibly can. Now, one thing I will say on the aluminum handle is, I mean, it is comfortable. It is slightly thinner than what the plastic one was. I have noticed that I feel more heat radiating out of this than on the plastic handle. If you want to kind of insulate yourself against that a little bit, what you can use, tennis racket grip tape or like what use is used for like BMX handlebars. You can wrap the handle with that, but at that point you kind of defeat the purpose of having the aluminum handle. I don't know that I feel that the aluminum handle is any more accurate or less accurate than the uh, plastic one. It's just one of those, it feels more quality and when you are working on fine components, it gives you something that, again, you just feel more confident in as you're going ahead and soldering with it. Now, finally, when it comes to soldering, it is easy to screw up components if you overheat things. Practice on just junk. You know, if you have a broken uh, set of headphones or a VCR or something like that, that you don't care if anything happens to it, just open it up, make sure that you've removed all power from it, discharge the capacitors, and just solder and unsolder stuff. Play around on stuff that you don't worry that if you sacrifice, that everything's gonna happen to it. Um, I've been soldering since 1991 or 92, and I started with a soldering gun. Never use a soldering gun. Those things are garbage. Always use a soldering iron. And make sure that you go ahead and do so in a well-ventilated area. The fumes can get kind of toxic and nauseous over time. But overall, I am looking forward to doing more work now that I have it properly calibrated. I know that if I set it to 350 degrees, it's 350 degrees. If I set it to 400 degrees, it's 400 degrees, and so on and so forth. It is something that a couple extra minutes to walk through and make sure that your your equipment is working properly, it'll save you headaches down the road, especially like this curved tip that I have here when I've tried soldering on like chips and circuit boards and whatnot. I knew it wasn't the right temp because as I was trying to drag solder, it would actually get caught on pins, which tells me it wasn't hot enough to reflow that solder to be able to do that drag type technique. So the blade type tip that I had, not nearly the problems that this one here had, but now both of them are calibrated and ready to rock and roll. They're calibrated too. Now, if you've got any other comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductions GK. And again, a huge shout out and thanks to Voltar. If you are looking for great tips and tricks on how to solder, how not not to solder, quite frankly, he has so many amazing videos out there that when I was starting back in you know, 1992, 1993, I wish someone else had produced content like he has. Thank you, Voltar, for everything that you have done. He's a bit of an arrogant person to deal with, but is it really arrogant when you can back it up? And Voltar can definitely back it up. Now, if you are looking for any other parts or accessories, controllers, charging docks, cases for your games and more. Do me a favor, head on over to castlemaniagames.com. Ryan has all of those things there, plus first run games for the PS4, PS5, Xbox, and the Nintendo Switch. And the cool thing is if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, you can save 10% off of most items on the website. Now, if you are looking for other videos on mods that we've done, we HDMI modded our NES that we have sitting here, RGB modded on our Super NES and Super Famicom Junior, our N64, and our upcoming video on the HDMI mod, the Pixel FX install on our N64. Those videos are coming up for you right now. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.